Day Trader Rockstar here with you with an updated video going into Friday. Um, tomorrow I will do the members watch list. I have a lot of great stocks on there. I want to try to get something out here for tomorrow. Paul will be on the air. Um, I'll be coming in around 9.30. Uh, right at the open so I wanted to be able to get some uh, setups out to you tonight sorry it's getting out there kind of late this is the best I could do so I'm um, not looking at this one right now first of all there was a couple of a couple uh, things I wanted to talk about this video is that the setups you know where, we, where we're trading the markets each day and again um, just to remind you broadcast live every day the markets trading the markets the only person who probably uh, broadcasts live trading uh, all day from uh, 8 o'clock in the morning till uh, the market close and then lots of times we do these after-hour shows in this case it's just a video but um, you know typically we're, we're trading swing trades but we've been uh, doing a lot of scalping the market's been incredible it's just been incredible the trend the, the that actually the you feel the short squeeze at the end of the day today that's just the bullishness in this market and everyone just trying to figure out when will it stop you know when will this upward momentum here cease to because you got to be with it if you're not with it then you're, you're leaving things behind you're missing out on the opportunities and you know what I know it's hard I know a lot of people are out there because I could see it in the markets I could see these markets ripping at the end of the day you know the shorts are being squeezed out um, and there's going to be continued more shorts so this thing could last a while so I'm not really uh, that aggressively short I'd like to hedge my longs um, if, especially if we get a gap up, you know, and it all really depends on uh, what happens during the uh, evening hours. I want to see if I actually have anything here. I was actually doing some research before. Let me bring up day trading radio. Uh, let me bring up day trading radio right here. And then you click on the play button here, and then I just want to see what the market's doing. So it's, it's shopping. It's, it's, maybe it's down a little, not much. All right, I just wanted to see what that was looking like fast. Um, <clears throat> so we've been really, really doing well. And, uh, you know, you don't want to confuse, you know, trading great and a great, you know, and not being influenced by a great market. A lot of people could trade great if they throw money into a, a very bullish stock and a very bullish trend. But, uh, you know, honestly, we've been nailing um, setups that are not ex extremely uh, bullish or trading at the highs, which are great setups in themselves. But we've been trading um, right now. Normally, I'm a divergence trader, so if we don't see the divergences, the next setup on the HPS methodology, which I teach, is the channel retracement. So it's usually a channel breakout, or and a little flag, or we should say a retracement to a trend line. <coughs> I I um tend to call it different things. Um, you know, it's definitely a breakout of a channel, and it's the first retracement back to the channel or a stochastic rotation back to an oversold level. It takes a little time to develop a little sensitivity to it, but it's very easy to play because you know, as the stochastics are getting oversold, and this is holding above the trend line, you pretty much want to start to scale in uh, in that point where you're getting closer to this trend line. Sometimes the market's so strong it doesn't give you much of an opportunity to pull back, but there's usually a little opportunity because you remember you're moving up. This is your first pullback, and this is considered really a, tr a trend change. So when you have a big established trend line, that first pullback is a higher low in a new directional trend. The trend was here, was down. Now the trend as we broke out is up, but we buy the first pullback, and then it would continue up. So these have been the ones that we've been setting up for the last week or so. And as you can see, all these are moving. Now, helps with the market. Of course, the market's moving higher. But we're able to get into these exactly at the right time. Um, <coughs> uh, CVS on the, I believe, on the 60-minute time frame was very similar to that. Um, that was another great one. And then Costco, again, same situation. Downward trend line. It popped out of it. Our first pullback, the first rotation. Really just want to buy into that trend line again. In this case, we kind of came down kind of a double bottom here, which gave us even a better setup. So we're able to combine setups here. We have a, a low and a lower, a higher low on the stochastics, a low and a double bottom or a lower low. It doesn't matter which one. They're both equal. As long as your price is, is coming back to a level where your stochastic were at one point, but the stochastics don't make it back down to that point now. almost looks like you, you did retrace, but there is a definite feel of a divergence here. And... Because the stochastic's turning back up, 
you start to see this. We were able to jump in easy on this and then ride that wave. So again, you see a very similar uh, waste management was the other one. And again, waste management, it was a trend line break. And we wait for that first little pullback here. It wasn't much of a pull. Actually, we were in probably a couple of spots on this. Um, yeah, I even had it here, the 1157 buy trigger and then the 1350 buy trigger. Now we're at $19. So these are the alerts that have been going out to the members here at uh, Day Trading Radio. This is uh, from our HPS watch list that goes out every Friday, which I'll be putting on a new watch list tomorrow with the new setups. Now, Disney is one that we tr traded just a little while ago, a couple days ago. And again, it was a uh, it was a channel a channel line. We got a, we got some good news on it, and I just sold it right off, and it was the right thing to do because the next day it came back. It's chopping around, and that's eventually going higher. Um, and that's also showing a divergence. So this is actually set up to go next week. And not to mention the drug stocks now that we're in. Well, Veru has been a, a fantastic one, and everyone... <laughs> Everyone just did fantastic on this. A lot of members were in this. Um, and just look at the uh, how far this thing went. Now, um, I still think Vero has some more upside on it. I think they're working on a big partnership for some of their drugs. They have a couple drugs in the pipeline. They have a cancer drug. Um, so I think the, the story here on Vero is good, but most of my profits are out of it now. So... Still holding a small position, but not as much as I was at 118. <laughs> 410, you get the picture, right? All right, so um, I'll throw you one. We're looking at BHVN. This is one that's going to be on is on the watch list and hasn't broken out. This one's a little bit more difficult. It's expecting FDA approval of their uh, migraine drug, prevention drug. And it's, you know what? Any type of FDA stuff is always going to be a big catalyst for a stock. Now, the catalyst could be a good thing or a bad thing. depends on how good the drug comes out. It's very hard. We did a lot of research on a lot of stocks. I mean, we've been recently in the AUPH. Um, and again, got to thank Steve for uh, bringing that one to my attention. But we were able to get most of the people into AUPH. And, uh, <laughs> and there's the uh, history of that one from $6 to $20. And we're continuing to look to add to the AUPH going forward because they have another drug in the trial and that drug I, I predict will be bigger than the current uh, lupus drug that caused this spike. So I love this AUPH still and we're in the e EXEL and that's coming up with a, uh, a data release and we've been in it since here and it was just a nice pullback and I said this is where we want to be in it. Um, so we started get progressively getting in it here and then as you can see I did start taking off some profits on this just for a trade. I'm um, holding the you know, majority thing, but I did have a double on some options that I picked up, and they doubled, so I just took it off. And, you know, just you never know. But anyway, I, I do expect this to have some good data coming out. And, and where do we go here? Well, my low range, con very conservative target is 25 on the low range. I'm going to say between, and I'm going to throw this out, 25 to 35. I feel that price will end up after that data is released. 25 to 35, uh, probably above 25 when all is said and done. Might pop up to 30, 35, sell off. I don't know. That's That becomes a little bit trickier. But we're in it, and, um, you know, as we get closer to, to those data drops, uh, we'll be really focused in on it and watching for those halts after hours or any news break because we want to be able to still get in it um, more, you know, I still want to, I added more to it today. I actually bought five more calls going out. Um, and again, that was sent out to the members. So that's uh, what we're looking for, and that's what we're doing here. Now, like I said, I want to get some of this stuff out to the members also. So if you're not a member, turn off the video now. <laughs> I don't have time to make two videos. Just a couple things because I'm not going to be in there early in, early in the morning. Here, is, um, here are some stocks that I'm, I'm liking. Um, the CVS continues to look good, but I'm going to look to take profits if you haven't taken profits. Um, the Costco, I think we're going to go probably one of the best bets on Costco, taking out the highs or getting up towards the highs. All right. Um, I haven't got that Walmart entry yet, but Walmart is setting up. 
It's a divergence, dual divergence setup. It's the first dual divergence since back here. It's almost identical one. Nice pullback low, lower low, higher low on the stochastics, and then off to the races. So this does look appetizing down here. I'm starting to see that divergence play out up here. We're already getting the signal, which I automatically have it put in. You know, I'm using a TC2000 platform for these, uh, for this, for these charts. Um, I was not going to didn't want to go over it too much I'm not going to get into it but Ford actually is giving me one of those signals where we have you remember our first go-to trade is the divergence trade and when we don't have the divergence trade or we're in a different scenario in the market meaning the market's very bullish we look for some of the pullbacks in those very strong stocks well here's Ford Motor Company broke out of a small channel you could look at this channel either way you could look at, uh, at it at this point um, this was a really nice channel right here. Once you broke through it, the first pullback had this nice run. Now we pull back to the secondary channel, and you can see we're kind of building off of this. So I kind of like this this area here. <clears throat> I like this area, but I don't see myself getting into this one. Um, a note, a notice, uh, just noticing the IWM hasn't taken out the highs yet. I mean, this is the lagger. Um, you know, the Russell. Hasn't so we have that you know I think that's going to happen and I think that's before the market tops out we're going to have to get the Russell here to catch up play some catch up all right so that's uh, interesting to hear that that's the IWM Disney uh, C probably going to take profits in C tomorrow C was a channel again this is a different type of channel you could trade channels different ways you could trade channel on a breakout and a pullback you could break it down on a breakdown and a pullback. All right. When we break down of a channel, we come back into it. We, this this tr channel line continues to have the same strength. The integrity of the line is still there, even though something happened and caused it to break through there. We try to regain it. Once we regain it, it still holds good, and I always look for a retest of it and then off to the races. So once we saw this retest and we saw it wasn't really completed in its rotation, we have a few days to trade it. So that's where we saw to see the momentum come in. How do you, how do you, that was awesome. And it looks like it's continued to be awesome. And being able to pick a spot like this, it just, it just, it makes you want to go to work every day. I just, like, look at this. It's like 1030 Thursday night, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm looking for the next easy setup. All right. That's what I'm doing right now. Next easy setup. You know, tractor supply company, TSCO, could be that setup. We have this long downward trend line. We came down, tagged it once, twice, three times, and it's starting to turn back up. I'm watching it. No position yet, but it does fit the criteria. Criteria on that. Um, we talked about that. I did take a short today at FNKO. Funko. This is a funk, Funko stock. Anyway, I'm just looking for this thing to get down to... Uh, you know, back down to the recent 2019 low and go lower than that. So, you know, I, got, I think I got the 15 puts on this and giving it a few months. I think we're getting down, back down under $10 easy on this Funko short. And that's about it other than, um, you know, I'm looking at Nike and I know that's dangerous to look at Nike as a short, but I'm starting to see Stochastic starting to fail here. And they, we just took out the high. So we are starting to see what could be a topping pattern or a topping divergence. But it hasn't confirmed itself. And this could just be a very strong further move up. And that's probably what it is. But I'm, always, I'm looking. I'm looking around for shorts. I'd rather be shorting the market when the market starts to go down and be directly in, in tune with that instead of trying to figure out what stock is going to... Look at, look at the squeeze at the end of the day today. I mean, it was just... It was it was amazing. Anyway, I got a lot more stocks here, and I want to get this out. Um, so you know what made it back on my list, and it's going to probably be a focus stock on the HPS watch list is IBM. Now, that's this this stock has been a real dog. I mean, look at this thing for the last gazillion years. It seems like it's just been going sideways, slightly down, 18, slightly down, 19. It kind of started off. But now we're just drifting here for the whole year. They need something to spark this. I feel the time is right. Now, I put a couple support lines in. There's an old trend line. Um, and I haven't touched this in a while. So when I went back and I kind of just reviewed it, 
Um, let me see if I can get rid of this line. This is. I started seeing some of these um, lines, like this support line back here, and we're seeing how we're we're messing with it. You know, I'm seeing what level is starting to play out. So when we break through, we come back and we kind of retested it there. So I'm just going to adjust this. So I'm trying to get that level. We tested it, tested, test, drop through, came back up to it, chopped around it, tested it all the way through, cut through it, back above it, bounced off of it, gapped under it, came back up to it, pulled back, back up to it again. All right, so we know this is the line in the sand, and I think we're going to just, because we just crossed back over here, um, you know, I think we have enough momentum now. We just switched over that we're going to break through this, and we're going to have a, what we call an expansion bar. It's a bar that's bigger than in the past seven bars. Now, if the range on this is from the low 135 to high 136, it's not a very big range. It doesn't, you know, it's a point and a half range. So I think we could get a big, big candle, you know, a bigger candle than maybe a two-point range candle, breakout candle. Um, I like it long. Like I said, it looks like a mooring stock, but I think with the crossover, we're getting back above that trend line, back above the 200. Someone's going to be pissed off that this thing's not moving. I think they're going to do something to spark it, reor do something. It just, it's just, it's ripe for an uh, activist investor to come in and shake things up. Because the people, you know, Big Blue used to be one of the, uh, you know, the greats. Now they're just boring. But, like I said, calm before the stor storm right now. I'm liking this one. IBM sees everything else is taking care of. Uh, everything else was perfect. Oh, I will throw one more out there for you. That's going to make it another one. Um, Carnival Cruise Lines. A couple. Typically, I'll start a trend line. Uh, at a gap. So if we started the trend line here at this gap and kind of just went across, we're right at that level. So we have pivot, pivot, two pivots to start off, and then we just let this thing go. And when the price comes back up to it, most likely it's going to react again. And what you did. And now look where we are. So we're going to be in, into this. I mean, we're we either breaking through this and I'm going to pull back, and that's really going to be the buy. Um, but you could probably get in now. You know, that's what I'm liking. I like that breakthrough, this trend. The volume started picking up, and the stochastics are in a very strong, strong uh, mode right now. So you're going to have some follow-through tomorrow. I think this is actually a nice trade, Carnival Cruise Line. So I'm going to get into this one tomorrow. Carnival I'm getting into. And I'll probably, let me circle that. I'll probably look at IBM. Um, we're going to take profits and see. SEE, maybe take profits. The rest of the profits in Costco, I think, is going to break out, um, and maybe take a bigger, another position, a bigger, or add to our position in EXEL. I'm going to get this out to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it did, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, a thumbs up, like, subscribe. I'm putting out these, or better yet, become a member of Day Trading Radio. You'll never miss an update. You'll, these, uh, you know, all the watch lists and all the trade alerts and every trade I take, go, you know gets delivered to the members so uh there's actually a nice little trial you could take 10 day trial free trial no credit card or anything just come by daytradingradio.com signing off